President Joe Biden spoke in Warsaw, Poland, um, addressed the Russian invasion of Ukraine and had some strong words, but I think absolutely correct words to share during this speech. And of course, within the United States uh, recently and really throughout the whole conflict, there is an unfortunately large population of people who are going to and actively disagree with what Biden is saying here. And so hopefully worldwide and within the United States, Biden's action of going to Kiev, Ukraine, that surprise trip that we covered, and speeches like this, powerful speeches outlining the facts of the situation um, will change some people's mind because we absolutely should be supporting Ukraine in the ways that we are. And hopefully we will continue um, at least as far as the United States it goes. But first uh, moment here, he kind of uh, addresses directly the Russian people and is saying, we're not coming for you. This is about defending uh, Ukraine. So tonight, I speak once more to the people of Russia. The United States and the nations of Europe do not seek to control or destroy Russia. The West was not plotting to attack Russia, as Putin said today. And millions of Russian citizens who only want to live in peace with their neighbors are not the enemy. This war is never a necessity. It's a tragedy. President Putin chose this war. Every day the war continues is his choice. He could end the war with a word. It's simple. If Russia stopped invading Ukraine, it would end the war. If Ukraine Stop defending itself against Russia would be the end of Ukraine. That's why together we're making sure Ukraine can defend itself. Absolutely. And in a later segment in today's show, we're going to talk about how Putin, and this is not a new thing, but has been trying to frame the Russian invasion of Ukraine as some sort of defensive action. The United States or Ukraine or whoever might be actually started this. It wasn't. Um, Russia. And Biden is highlighting here, as I wish everyone understood, that Russia is to blame for this, and Russia is the one responsible for ending the war. And until that happens, the United States hopefully will support uh, Ukraine in their effort of defending themselves. Then we get to uh, the second moment here. One year, in, one year into this war, Putin no longer doubts the strength of our coalition. But he still doubts our conviction. He doubts our staying power. He doubts our continued support for Ukraine. He doubts whether NATO can remain unified. But there should be no doubt. Our support for Ukraine will not waver. NATO will not be divided, and we will not tire. <laughs> President Putin's craven lust for land and power will fail and the Ukrainian people's love for their country will prevail. Democracies of the world will stand guard over freedom today, tomorrow, and forever. So that's, what it's, that's what's at stake here, freedom. That's the message I carried to Kyiv yesterday, directly to the people of Ukraine. When President Zelensky said he came to the United States in December, quote, he said, this struggle will define the world and what our children and grandchildren, how they live, and then their children and grandchildren. And we'll stop that one uh, there. Absolutely. And at one point he said, we will not tire. And I think that's an important theme for sure, because the hope, I'm sure, from uh, Putin is that the West and NATO, the United States specifically, will just get exhausted, will give up. People will no longer be as bought into supporting Ukraine in this. And Biden's saying as long as he's um, in office and with the power he has with that, that won't be the reality. We won't get tired. We won't get exhausted with this. Um, I mean, we're tired of it happening, but we're not going to tire in our support of Ukraine in their defense of their country, um, then talking about the atrocities that the Russian military, the Russian government has caused and has partook in. For free people refuse to live in a world of hopelessness and darkness. 
You know, this has been an extraordinary year in every sense. Extraordinary brutality from Russian forces and mercenaries. They've committed depravities, crimes against humanity, without shame or compunction. They've targeted civilians with death and destruction, used rape as a weapon of war, stolen Ukrainian children in an attempt to, st in an attempt to steal Ukraine's future, bombed train stations, maternity hospitals, schools, and orphanages. No one, no one can turn away their eyes from the atrocities Russia is committing against the Ukrainian people. It's abhorrent. It's abhorrent. But extraordinarily, as well, has been the response of the Ukrainian people and the world. One year after the bombs began to fall, Russian tanks rolled into Ukraine. Ukraine is still independent and free. Absolutely. Um, and as I always kind of talk about this, the whole event is just a complete tragedy caused by um, the Russian government, specifically Vladimir Putin. The response we've seen from Ukraine has been absolutely um, incredible and absolutely courageous and all of the words that you can use to describe it. They absolutely um, deserve to be described in that way because it's been pretty stunning watching how they've been able to stand up to what should be a much more dominant military, the Russian military, but in this situation has not. And that's been incredible to see. And the credit goes to the Ukrainian people, um, to the country of Ukraine. But also, it's part of why I'm so supportive of the support the United States is giving um, military, military aid and otherwise, because that has played a role in this. It is part of the reason that Ukraine has had the resources to use the courage and the strength that they have, but then have the necessary tools um, and resources to make that manifest the situation we're seeing now. And so hopefully we will continue to support Ukraine and it won't be NATO, it won't be the United States getting tired, but instead Russia and eventually Putin will give up with this. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to be a part of what makes this show possible, plus get access to the full video version of the show hours before all the clips are uploaded to YouTube, plus get the full bonus show every single Saturday, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash Luke Beasley. That's patreon.com slash Luke Beasley. Link in the description.